Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, for today's webinar on neuroplasticity and trauma uh, as it relates to trauma and post-traumatic stress and post-traumatic stress disorder. So let me start with defining the word trauma. Uh, trauma is defined as a distressing or disturbing experience. This can take many formats and have varying effects on us and our nervous system. It can be caused by a single event like a car accident, or it can be caused by multiple events over a period of time like a war. It can also be caused by inappropriate beliefs. So when I say inappropriate, I just mean that the belief itself is kind of not congruent with every level of our psyche. Uh, so it's, in a, you know, it's only inappropriate because our system uh, has to alter the way it functions naturally for us to believe and live that way. So a lot of these beliefs are fear driven, you know, like fear of driving, for example, or anything else that scares us uh, that we see here do or perform often. And so being and living like that in, in the, under those beliefs can be traumatic so that when we're able to change our perspective and change the trauma, uh, then you know, we stop having an inappropriate response in our nervous system to that. And so that's why uh, sometimes inappropriate beliefs can be traumatic for us. So trauma, you know, the beliefs or the events, the trauma patterns that grow with us. So unless we process or change our perspective on the traumas, they're going to continue to grow because every day we're creating more and more nerves. And if we have that trauma as something that we're worried about or our system is looking out to avoid in our future, it's going to keep growing with us. And if we you know, allow that space in our lives to neurologically uh, you know, happen, then our physiology is going to continue to create the pattern that has that trauma embedded in our bodies and in our nervous system. And so what it's gonna do is affect how we see what's going on in today, in our present events. Because our nervous system is what processes our senses so that we know what's happening. And if that belief or that trauma or the beliefs that we got from the trauma are still functioning in our nervous system, then it's gonna to continue to create nerves from with that belief or that trauma embedded in, in, the, in the nerves. This dynamic causes us to re-feel the trauma and could actually make our neurological responses to our lives get worse over time. Trauma is a big you know, part of what affects how our nerves are functioning. So it's a big part of neuroplasticity. And so the level of ongoing effect a trauma has on us is directly related to the number of nerves affected by that trauma. So when I say affected, I mean, we have a trauma when we're young and you know, all of our nerves that we create from then on as we grow are gonna be watching out for that trauma to happen again. So as time goes on, that trauma is being embedded in all future neurological processes. So this can affect you know, uh, how, how deeply we feel things and this affects how long we feel the trauma and it also can affect how many different systems of the body are affected by that trauma. So the ongoing effect is influenced by the number of times we have to endure similar events. So if we had a car accident when we were young, um, you know, when we keep getting in the car and we interact with similar, you know, subject matter like getting in the car, um, and we trigger the already traumatized nerves or trigger nerves that are attached to that subject, then the trauma around the car can get worse and worse and worse uh, unless we learn how to process it a little differently. And so when it gets worse and worse, we don't learn how to process it differently. This is where PTSD is involved. So, you know, we all have post-traumatic stress, right? PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. And so there's healthy levels and there's the disorder level. So, you know, we have normal, which is just post-traumatic stress. And then we have, oh, it's causing an issue. And then it becomes a disorder. And that's when it's really stopping us from being able to function normally. 
And so, um, you know, this is all based on our nervous system's response to whatever the stress or the traumatic was. And the science of neuroplasticity, you know, proves that we can change that. It also is, you know, why PTSD happens. So it's a double-edged sword. The effects of PTSD can be very, very pervasive. A big part of our neuroplasticity and our neurological function is that nerves connect with nerves that have any association with the reason why the nerves were created in the first place. You know, you gotta remember that the nerves communicate by creating and receiving electrical signals from our neurons. So when I say yellow, all of my neurons that have any history or anything to do with yellow are actually gonna fire up. And then depending on how many of the nerves there are that are associated with what's happening now, that either will stay in my unconscious or get processed in, through my subconscious and into my consciousness. So there's a lot going on with yellow that I'm not aware of, right? And so that stays in the unconscious because my subconscious is basically processing and deciding whether you know, all those neurons have anything to do with what's going on now or not. And then PTSD, when the trauma is bad enough, it can get so bad that just breathing causes that to come up and stop us being able, from being able to function. So it's when there are enough signals being sent or the signals are strong enough that we become very, very aware of it. And this is dependent on the number of connections as well as the areas inside of us that those nerves are connected to. So since we're create, creating new nerves and nerve connections every day, we can change that. And that's what neuroplasticity is all about. So if we continue to connect to the trauma and be scared of it, the traumatic response will get worse and worse. If we start to connect to the trauma and assure ourselves that we don't have to worry about that anymore, then it's going to get lower and lower. The response is going to get lower and lower. And this is how neuroplasticity works. So neurological beliefs are, are a huge part of why they function. In fact, when we create new nerves, those nerves that we create for whatever purpose can't be used for another purpose. So, you know, the nerves are firing based on our beliefs until we correct it or change how our nervous system functions. So, you know, it's really important to become aware of what's causing the PTS, what's causing that neurological response that we really don't, you know, kind of want in our lives. And so to do that, we have to practice you know, being aware of the trauma or getting exposed to whatever triggers the trauma with safeguards so that we can train our nervous system not to be scared of it anymore. And so that way we can train our system to understand that we are safe. You know, from my example before, you know, if we start getting in cars and start paying attention to how many times we've been safe and really appreciate and feel that, we're going to create a lot of nerves that understand that. And that's tapping into the neuroplasticity. And so it's a big part of being able to recover from PTSD. You know, there's a lot of people that believe you cannot. There's a lot of people that live with that PTSD for the rest of their lives. And all they do is learn how to cope with it. But neuroplasticity says, and science proves, that we can actually stop creating that post-traumatic response, which is a much better way to live our lives. You know, I have reviewed over 16,000 brainwave scans through our EEGs. There are a particular parts of the brain and body that are responsible for the primary reactions to these threats. So we can see these connections through the EEG analysis and structure ways to influence the nervous system connections to function differently. So when we influence our nervous systems to disconnect the subject of our trauma from that we are in danger parts of our nervous system, the trauma is gonna stop affecting us so much. And we can actually resolve the PTSD and stop creating the responses that qualify us for PTSD and stop us from being able to live our lives the way we want. So through neuroplasticity, we can make this happen often just by meditating a different way. And that's such a, a, a fantastic thing that I just, I got to talk about it. <laughs> you know, because our nervous system is all about survival, right? And so if we have a trauma, our nervous system's holding on to that trauma, that event or the belief system 
or the series of those events to try to protect us from it in the future. And so our nervous system's way of protection is fight, flight, freeze, or panic. And so I don't want to live that way. That's just surviving. I don't know about you. I mean, I, I, I want to stop just surviving. I want to thrive. And a main part of you know, thriving is in training my nervous system that all I wanted to do is be involved with me being healthy, happy, and whole. Because that's the base of survival. All the other survival instincts that we have um, in our society, we don't really need those anymore. You know, I can just consciously worry about that. I don't need my un subconscious, my survival instinct to be in charge of that. And so through this process of neuroplasticity, if we want to mitigate the effect of the past traumas, it's really important to start to tap into this great process to help change our lives. So in summary, the science of neuroplasticity shows that trauma gets wired into every area of function, depending on how bad the trauma is. And if you want to improve how you're functioning or living your life, neuroplasticity means that we can. And it's really important to pay attention to how it functions, to manage the memories of our trauma, and change our perspectives, to then allow us to grow every day towards thriving, instead of impacting ourselves more and more that area of thriving. I'm sorry, that area of surviving. And uh, so we just allow our nervous system to be in charge. That survival, we're going to keep creating survival nerves every day until it becomes a disorder, which means it interrupts how we can function. So how you live and think each and every day has a direct effect on how your nervous system functions. It is important to recondition ourselves that the traumas will not reoccur or harm us now or in the future. And in that way, we can stop the neurological process of making it worse and worse and worse and stop it before it becomes a disorder. And often, many times, stop even having any response to those triggers. So in closing, with today's technology, you know, it is 2020, so it's time. And our awareness of how neuroplasticity works and how to be in charge it is easier than ever before to identify traumatized areas of our nervous system and to entrain ourselves to release and not be afraid of past traumas so they won't continue to affect our lives anymore. So for more information on neuroplasticity and living PTSD free, visit pathwayslife.com and click on schedule a free call for your free consultation. Thank you so much. I'm, I really want to thank you guys for joining us during your lunchtime today. And uh, I'm going to turn it over for questions. Are there any questions, Jennifer?